Hey there, abstract equality, or as I've titled this video, loose equality, is I think one of the most misunderstood topics in JavaScript. People know loose equality, the double equals, to check if its operands are roughly equal to each other. The string 55 and the number 55 are kind of the same thing, but not strictly the same thing, with triple equals. People usually advise against using loose equality, and personally, well, if JavaScript came out with a strict strict mode that removed loose equality, I wouldn't be too bothered. But there's a lot of misinformation out there, and I thought it would be helpful to clean some of that up, which is why I've been working on this video for so long. Loose equality in reality is a process that tries to implicitly coerce its operands to be the same type before passing it off to strict equal to give you the real result. Implicit coercion by itself isn't actually too bad. It's used in many languages too, and JavaScript programmers use it pretty often. Let's take an example over here. In this example, we take advantage of falsy and truthy values to check whether we should print out an array to the console. If the array exists and has a length property greater than zero, print it out, just like that. My r checks if it exists, my r.length checks if its property is one or greater. Now, falsy values are a concept that really means, pretty simply, values that when passed to the Boolean function will evaluate to false. So over here we have an empty string, the two zeros, regular zero and big int. We have nan, null, and undefined. Do not confuse this with abstract equality, however. Double equals does not rely on the system whatsoever. While using the exact same values, we get true for half only. I'm no statistician, but 50-50 looks like zero correlation to me. In fact, I would go so far as to say the concept of falsy values never comes up with an abstract equality in the spec. Uh, spec? What's the spec? The JavaScript specification is an esoteric document that instructs browsers on how JavaScript should work. Browsers all can code up the implementations themselves, but if you want to know how JavaScript works without digging through C++ code, this is the place to look. The spec can often be pretty confusing, but this particular section right over here is actually kind of readable. It defines abstract equality as a list of steps, and I think it's pretty cool. If you're ever wondering why null is loosely equal to undefined, this is why. Because it says so. There's no low-level reason why it must be that way. The discussion stops here. It works that way because the document says it should. Well, I can go through this document over here. I'm going to instead use a tool I've been working on to explain it a bit more simply. The abstract equality stepper. Look at that beauty. I made this in uh, Svelte and TypeScript. Now, I've written up the steps over here to roughly match the specs, but there are some minor changes in formatting to help with how my tool works, but it's essentially the same. Let's punch in some examples we've shown to explore how this works. So let's take um, false and zero. And zero, let's step through it. And look at that, number eight. We can see that if either of the operands are a Boolean, we convert the Boolean to a number. So eight and nine basically mean the same thing, but for either side of the operand, either side of the operation. Notice that it tells us to perform an abstract equality comparison with double equals, but this list is what double equals means. So that's recursion. That's right, this list is a recursive definition. We start again with new values. Now we have x equals 0 and y equals 0 because false, when converted to a number, is 0. We start the list again, and we end up stopping on the first step because they're the same type. And then we pass it off to a strict equality comparison. So notice that abstract equality uses strict equality. So technically, abstract equality must be less performant if the implementation matches the spec exactly. This is way too minor to matter in practice, but I thought it was, it was interesting at least. Let's try false and an empty string from beforehand. And like before, this should actually equal true. I'm sure, let me just press enter to huh, show you that it's true. Sorry. 
false and zero. There we go. True. Now let's do empty string. So with an empty string, we start off the same way we did last time, where the Boolean value is converted to zero. Then, after this, we convert the string to a number as well. A lot of number conversions going on here. And then we have x equals zero and y equals zero, which of course is true. We convert it to a number twice, and we're going to convert to a number more often than not for pretty good reason. Numbers are pretty easy to compare each other to. Even when we compare using reference equality, like with two objects, we're comparing memory locations, which, as you might have guessed, are numbers. We can substitute zero for false in all the other examples. We have um, zero equals zero n, which, you know, that one's obvious. Zero equals nan, well, they're both numbers. Zero isn't nan, so, again, that's obvious too. And let's go with zero equals null and zero equals undefined. Let's do zero equals null. Let's restart. And step 13, return false. There is no step over here that defines how you should act if you have one of your operands null or undefined and the other operand anything other than null and undefined. If null and undefined are compared against each other, we say true, but anything compared with null that isn't undefined and anything compared with undefined that isn't null or undefined will return false, simply because there isn't actually an option to evaluate that. That simply. Nothing to do with falsy values at all over here, as you can see. With that out of the way, let's look at a common example of abstract equality weirdness, a real old head scratcher. And I'll type it in the console right over here. True. This looks paradoxical, but it actually makes sense. First, we convert the left array to a Boolean, because, of course, this is a truthy value, and we are including truthy and falsy concepts, but we haven't touched abstract equality just yet. So we have Boolean over here, and we get true, because, of course, arrays are not one of the falsy values we showed beforehand, so by default, it's truthy or true. But the exclamation mark, of course, flips this, so it's actually the same thing as doing false equals equals array, like this. Well, let's put that into our tool. Let's restart. And let's say false equals equals uh, array, like that. And let's step forward. Uh, Boolean, of course, goes to uh, zero. So we get zero equals the array. And now we get something a bit curious. We find ourselves faced with the magical two primitive function. This one is interesting. We can't just compare a primitive value and an object. We need two primitive values or two objects to hand it off to the strict equality comparison, number one. We can try turning our array into a primitive and we press enter, out pops an empty string. It says running with x equals zero and y equals an empty string. This string of course gets converted to a number with number four over here. x equals zero and y equals zero, we get true. Okay, so I get this much, but why did two primitive return an empty string for the array? How does two primitive work? What does it do? Well, we can look at the spec itself. So if you go to the spec, you can go over to two primitive. So you can find where that is over here. There we go. But this, in my opinion, is a bit more complicated than the other spec. I do advise reading the actual spec as I've written it over here or in the actual specification, but too primitive over here I think is a bit more complicated than I'd like it to be. So I'm going to show you my handwritten JavaScript implementation of this. So let's just read the function as I've written it so far. If we're past an object that is a primitive itself, just return that primitive because if you're trying to convert a primitive to a primitive, just return the value you gave me. It's already a primitive. If it isn't, however, Go a bit further. If it has a property called symbol.toPrimitive that isn't equal to null or undefined, then we try to call it and return that value. Right? If it is a primitive, you return that value. If it doesn't have a symbol.toPrimitive, we're going to check its value of and two string properties. Remember how I said that it's easier to call value of than to string because value of is the function on objects that are meant to return a number, and toString is the 
method on objects that is meant to return a string. And these are actually used internally when you call the number or string function, or when the browser tries to figure out what the primitive form of either of these are in certain contexts. So for example, I want to really quickly show you this snippet of code. Object equals value of into string, or where value of logs calling value of and returns a number to string, logs calling to string and returns the uh, i emoji. So console log object plus 43 will try to retrieve the number version of object. We're going to try to retrieve value of, and actually we would get 143. With the console log, where we're using string interpolation, we're going to try to get the string version of object. And again, if we type string object, we're going to get the eyes. If we type number object, we're going to get the number. So these are actually methods that are used internally when trying to retrieve such sort of data. All right. So in our two primitive function, we're going to first go to value of because numbers are easier to convert. So if we can get a number, why not get a number, right? That's the, what we're trying to go for anyway when we're comparing things together. Um, if the value of property doesn't exist or if we get it and it returns an object, then we try checking the two string method. If the two string method um, doesn't exist or it does exist and we return an object, we're going to throw a type error. Hmm. Type error. Yeah, that's right. You can actually throw an error when doing an equality check. This was a bit of a surprise to me. The fact that just doing a simple equality check, checking if two things are equal, can throw an error. An operation that you think is simple can throw an error. This will not happen with triple equals, but it will happen over here. That is interesting. That is interesting. Now, let's try to create some examples where this will actually happen according to the function as we've written it over here. So the first example that I can think of, we have object one and we define a method called symbol.toPrimitive, but we don't set it to a function. And rightfully so, we get an error. Number 45 is not a function. I can't call 45, right? It's a number. You give me a symbol to, to primitive property, you better make it a function, right? But let's say we do make it a function. Even then, object two, it's a function that returns an object. I just like using the object constructor like this because um, I'm a weirdo. But if we do this, again, it's going to say cannot convert object to primitive value. An object isn't a primitive. And you're telling me symbol that's a primitive returns an object? I asked you for a primitive. So that's going to give you an error as well. We can also do the same thing with the other methods, like I showed you beforehand. How if none of these return objects or they just don't exist, then cannot convert object to primitive value. To string and value of both return objects now. It will throw an error. Now, we can't actually delete the value of function on most objects. So if I want to show you how if to string or value of don't exist, then it will also make an error. This won't actually work. So if I go to delete object three dot to string, that'll work. Delete this value of, that'll work. And even though it doesn't have anything on it. So object three is empty, seemingly. If I do the console log object three equals equals 45, it'll work. There's no errors anymore. But I thought we said if value of and two string don't exist, it'll throw an error. No, because objects actually inherit, sorry, object three, they have a prototype. The object prototype itself defines a two string and value of method right there. So we can try to delete it, but it won't actually get deleted. However, it is possible to make an object with no prototype using object.create null. So dot create null right over here. And again, if we open it up, no properties like this one, which had one property, the proto property. Look at that. Now, since it has no prototype, it has no value of function and no to string. So if we compare this right now without touching it at all to, let's say, 45, cannot convert object to primitive value. If you throw this into a equality comparison with a number, you're going to get an error. It's going to throw an error. And I've wrapped that into a try catch block. That's crazy. I'm not sure even TypeScript sort of requires this. Now, 
With that detour, let's close with the essence of the video. How to understand loose equality. When comparing two things of different types, it'll help to convert the more complex type to a simpler representation. If we can convert to a number, do that. If we're adding an object to the mix, get the primitive value and again try squeezing a number out of it. Null and undefined are loosely equal and that's that. If we get something like symbol, or we compare null or undefined with anything else by each other, we get false by default. By default. Not because of a certain rule, but because it just doesn't match any of the rules we have set there. And funny enough, symbol actually has a toString method. Like this, I'll show you. Symbol dot two string, oops, two string prints out symbol. But if we compare it with this symbol, oops, symbol, we'll get false. Why? Because again, there is no rule for symbol inside the spec over here. So by default, we get false. Step number 13, like on the tool. If I restart, I type a symbol and then symbol oops forgot to give the start 13 step 13 nothing we can do so we say false automatically so that's the idea that's the spec that's loose equality i hope you've learned something today if you have uh please let me know i'd love to hear it this tool is available on my website nledge.dev slash abs dash eq uh, the github link is going to be on the page itself in the upper right corner over there stay curious until next time adios